within this lesson, we'll look at numerical expressions using words and visual models, in particular, tape diagrams. Here we have the expression 3 times 5. Notice that there is not an equal sign with an expression. We could also express this within words by calling this the product of 3 and 5. Here's another example where we have words describing an expression, and in particular we have the difference between 17 and 6. Difference is the answer to a subtraction problem. So we're subtracting 6 from 17. So that's 17 minus 6 as the expression. Another way to state the first one there, of the product of 3 and 5, would be 3 times 5, using words. Here I have another instance where it is that I'm looking at 5 times the sum of 7 and 8. First thing that I'm going to do is to just look at this a little bit closer, more closely. We have 5 times. That's similar to my first example, where it is that we are talking about three times, and except we're talking about here, it's five times the sum of eight, seven and eight. Let's look at a visual representation of this using a tape diagram. We'll actually start with the sum of seven and eight, and the sum is an answer to a, right, addition problem. So we will add together seven and eight to begin with. So this is here is a bar model, and then so we have this being the sum of 7 and 8. So we can write 7 plus 8 there. And yet, our expression for within words was stating 5 times the sum of 7 and 8. Here we have the sum of 7 and 8 represented, except we're talking about five times that amount. So that there is two times that amount. Now we have three times that amount, four times that amount, and finally, five times that amount of that seven plus eight. It's important that we actually represent that still using that expression, so we'll start with that 7 plus 8, we'll put it in parentheses, and we're going to multiply it by what? Multiply it by 5. 5 times the sum of 7 and 8. If we were to evaluate that, 7 plus 8 is 15. We have 5 times 15 which does equal 75. There we're evaluating that expression, meaning that we're simplifying that expression, we're getting a number for that expression there. That's 5 times 15 equaling 75. We have the words for that. We have a visual representation. In other words, we have a tape model showing 5 times the sum of 7 and 8. We have the expression showing 5 times 7 plus 8. And finally, we evaluated or simplified that expression. Here we have another expression described within words. We have the sum of 6 14s and 3 14s. We'll start with 6 14s. If we have 6 14s, what we're thinking about there, if we draw that visually, is that we actually have 14 except we have that six times. Two, three, four, five, and six. And then we also have three more 14s, so the sum of that. So this here is the six 14s, and then yet we also have three more 14s. One, two, and three. 
that's the three fourteens, and they were all supposed to be equal length, except I ran out of room. So if I'm going to do that, the sum of six fourteens, how do I get this value here of the six fourteens? If I just had two, it would be... F um, I could just add 14 together twice. I could add to 14 together six times for this, or I could use a multiplication problem of what? 14 times 6. For my three 14s, I would have had 14 times 3. And remember, we're, look at this visual diagram here. It says the sum here, so in between this, we will put an addition sign. If we read this again, this is the sum of 6 14s times four, 3 fourteens. Now, one of the things that you might have done if you were trying to figure this out is you actually might have done 6 times 14, 6 14s plus 3 times 14, which also would be a valid way of showing this within a written form as an expression. So we have this expression here. Now, if we were to solve this and to evaluate this expression, 6 times 14, so we have 14 here times 6 using a standard algorithm, 4, 2, 6 times 1 is 6, plus 2 is 8, 14 times 6 is 84, and 3 times 14 is 42, 84 plus 42, 4 plus 2 is 6, and 8 plus 4 is 12. So we have 12 there, 126. So evaluating the expression gives us 126. Here we have 3 times the difference of 20 and 5. Please represent this with a visual model, a tape diagram, and also an expression. Do also evaluate that expression. Pause the video. For our visual model of this here, we have 3 times the difference of 20 and 5. So we have this here representing the difference of 20 and 5. 20 and 5, and we have 3 times that amount, 2 and 3. That would be 3 times the difference of 20 and 5. So first off, we take 20 and 5, and we have the difference of those two. Do remember to place those parentheses, otherwise we would have a completely different expression. That expression right there does show you that you're multiplying three times that difference of 20 and 5. Now if you put the times 3 over here, that would have worked as well. If we evaluated this properly, we can go the value in parentheses first of that 20 minus 5, which is 15. And we go 3 times 15, which is 45. And so 3 times the difference of 20 and 5, here's the expression. And that's the expression there. We have the uh, expression described within words. We have it with a visual model. And here we have evaluated that expression to get the value of 45. Other times we may be given an expression and be asked to describe that expression within words. If we look at this here, we actually have this within parentheses of that 18 plus 4, and we can describe that as the sum of 18 and 4. Next, we also have this 7 times here, and then so we actually have 7 times the sum of 18 and 4. We also might have been asked to use a picture representation of that, so that we could go ahead and look at that there, and look at that amount, that's what it is that we would have solved first, of the sum of 18 and 4, and then we had 7 times that amount. And sometimes looking at that visual example of this here, 5, 6, and I need one more of those. Put it over here. 
7 times that amount of 18 plus 4. Might have helped us figure that out. We also, of course, could have evaluated that. 18 plus 4 is 22, and then we have 7 times 22. 7 times 20 already is 140, and then 7 times 2 is 14. One, 14 and 140 is 154, if I was to evaluate that expression. Here I have another expression. Thinking about this expression, looks like we have this first here. It looks like the product of 20 and 3. Or we could have said 20 times 3. Product is the answer to a multiplication problem. And then we could say that this here is minus 18. That is one way to describe this. We also could have described it as the difference of 18 and the product of 20 and 3. The difference of 18 and the product of 20 and 3. Here's another one that I'll help walk you through here. We have this here. And that'd be the product of 7 and 6. Hmm. And it looks like we're actually adding that to that there. And the answer to an addition problem is a sum. See what you come up with. Pause it and come back. Describe this as the sum of 7 times 6 and... 2 times 6. If you use the term in the words product of 7 and 6, product of 2 and 6, that would work as well. You do have to say sum of so that we know that we are adding those. If you evaluated this, 7 times 6 is 42, 2 times 6 is 12, and we're adding those together. 42 plus 12 equaling 54. Visual representation of that might have helped you figure out the words describing that expression. One of the other things we can do is we can actually compare expressions where it is that we are looking at two different expressions and then we are comparing them. Here it looks like we have seven times 6 plus 3. Here we actually have 6 plus 3 times 5. And then so we're actually looking at 7 groups of 6 plus 3 versus 5 groups of 6 plus 3. And we already know that 7 groups is larger than 5 groups of that same number. We of course could have evaluated both sides Or we could have described within words why it is this was the case, just like I was saying before, that seven groups of the sum of six and three, I'm writing it all out for some reason, um, is greater than five groups of six and three. So I have that written out there, and it got cut off just a little bit. And I fixed that, whereas seven groups of it, as six and three, is actually greater than five groups of six and three. You can think about that commutative property moving that five times to the opposite side or thinking of order of operations where we would have to figure out 
that parentheses value first. Here we have another expression where it is that we could compare the two, and comparing the two without using, without having calculated both of them. So we actually have here where it is that we have 12 times 5, and then we have two 12s tripled. 12 times 5, we could use a visual model or a tape diagram to represent all of those 12s, and in fact, we have 12 fives there, right? And in this case here, it looks like we have two 12s tripled. So we have two 12s, so one 12, right? And then in the other case there, we have two 12s, and then so we have two 12s, and then yet they want us to triple this. So we actually have, that's two more 12s, and then we actually have two more 12s as well. So that's two 12s, two more 12s. So that you'd, two 12s tripled is actually how many 12s? One, two, three, four, five, and six 12s. And then so we know that five 12s is less than six 12s, or that 12 times five is less than two 12s tripled. We could, of course, check by actually calculating this. 12 times 5 is 60. 2 12s, 2 12s, 2 times 12 is 24. And then if it was tripled, that's why it's times 3. And 24 times 3 is 72. 60 is less than 72. So both using a calculation and thinking that out using a visual model, shows that 12 times 5 is less than 2 12s tripled.